God is good all the time. God is good. Amen. Today, God's message for us is when trouble pays a visit. When trouble pays a visit. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter your your your, your color. It doesn't matter your height, your weight, your, your 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 place in life. At some point in your life, trouble will pay a visit. Hallelujah! It doesn't matter who you are. Trouble will pay a visit, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. One day, one day, trouble will pay you a visit. Some of us, trouble has been paying visits over and over and over. Some of us, uh, trouble has is already paid a visit and trouble is already in our house, in our homes, in our marriages, in our workplace. Trouble has paid a visit. Now, what do we do when trouble pays a visit? Amen. Hallelujah. What do you do? When trouble pays a visit. Well, there's a saying that says, never trouble trouble till trouble troubles you. <laughs> Amen. Never trouble trouble till trouble troubles you. Now, sometimes you don't want to trouble trouble, but trouble will pay you a visit. You don't make it happen, but trouble will come on its own. Hallelujah. Many of us, trouble has paid us a visit. Many of us, trouble is currently there. Many of us will face trouble tomorrow, whether we like it or not. Because when trouble is paying you that visit, it doesn't care who you are or what's going on in your life. He's coming. He's paying you a visit. He's paying you a visit. Hallelujah. So, there. Uh, I mean, as, uh, those of you who can see the screen, it says, what is the other word for, uh, what are the other words for pay a visit? What does pay a visit? I mean, what other words can you put in place of pay a visit? Hallelujah. And the words the good old professor gave are, well, one of them is visit. One of them is drop in. Another one is to call. Another one is to stop by. Another one is to look in. Another one is to see. Another one is to run in. Another one is to drop by. Another one is to pop in. And another one is to stop off. But if, whether it is drop in, call, stop by, run in, look in, whatever it is, pop in, they are all temporary. Every visit is temporary. No visit is permanent. Every visit is temporary. Hallelujah. So when temp trouble also comes to visit, it is temporary. It is not permanent. It's not, trouble is not going to come and stay and stay and stay and overstay. It's welcome. Well, so for some of us, one day over is overstaying your welcome. Some of us, one hour is overstaying your welcome. Some of us, one even 30 minutes is overstaying your welcome. But the good thing about a visit is that that person is not going to be there forever. That situation is not going to be there forever. That crisis won't be there forever. It is just temporary. So trouble, crisis, problem is temporary. It is just on a visit. It is not permanent. Hallelujah. So we read from Job chapter 1. We were looking at the story of Job. And in chapter 1, we see Job is enjoying life. So those of you who are there, open your Bibles with me to Job chapter 1. Job is en enjoying life. Everything seems to be good. Hallelujah. That's how the story of Job starts. When you you were reading your Bible, it starts by telling you about a good life that Job was living. Amen. A good life that Job had. 
Everything was good. He was rich. He was wealthy. He had children. Oh, life was good. Amen. It says, it says, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. So he was man who was, he was good. Everything was fine. Life was good for Job. Well, what did he possess that made him such a, uh, a wealthy man? The Bible says, verse 2, it says, He had seven sons and three daughters. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep. 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels. 500 cows and 500 donkeys. And each of these sheep, camels, donkeys, and cows were being taken care of by servants. His 10 children had servants taking care of all of them. That's how wealthy this man was. Now, I have never seen a camel, but I've seen a picture of a camel. I've seen a movie where a camel is in. And a camel is so huge. An animal. And I'm wondering if you have 3,000 of those camels. Where do you, where do you keep 3,000 camels? How much land do you need to have 3,000 camels? You have 7,000 sheep. How much land do you need to have to store 7,000 sheep? 500 donkeys. What, what space do you need? How many servants do you need to take care of 500 sheep, donkeys? 500 cows. That's a lot of servants. I'm, there were so many, the Bible even didn't tell us how many they were. It says he had many servants. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, so this man was the greatest of all the people in the East. He was that rich. He was one of the richest men in the land. Life was good. Life was good for Job. But then the Bible says that one day, Job, was there and trouble came a visiting. Hallelujah. Trouble came a visiting and all of it went away. All these possessions went away. All these possessions in one fell swoop. Shoo! Life was good. 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, 500 donkeys, servants taking care of all these things. And then one day, 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 trouble came visiting. So in verse 13 of Job chapter 1, it says, And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating, drinking wine at their oldest brother's house. And the messenger came to Job and said to Job, whilst the children were enjoying, a servant came to visit Job. And he said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding beside them when the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to come and tell you. So the servants that were taking care of the 500 cows and 500 donkeys, the Sabians attacked them and took the 500 cows away, 500 donkeys away, killed all the servants except the one who escaped to come and tell Job. One day, trouble came to visit and all his cows, all his donkeys, 500 cows, 500 donkeys, all gone. Servants taking care of these 500, gone. Well, 
Troubles visited didn't stop right there. The Bible says in verse 16, that whilst that first one was speaking, another one also came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and all have, all have died and I alone have escaped to tell you. So the 7,000 sheep this whole herd of sheep are grazing. All of a sudden, some fire came from heaven and struck them, killing them and the servants. And only one servant taking care of 7,000 sheep. I wonder how many servants take care of 7,000 sheep. And now they are all gone. The sheep are gone. The servants are gone. Only one escapes to come and tell, make, gives a report to, uh, to Job. Trouble has come to visit Job indeed. Well, verse 17 says, while he was also still speaking. See, while the first one was giving the report about the cows and the donkeys being stolen by the Sabians and killed, the second one came. He waited for the first one to finish his report. Then he gave his report. Whilst the second one was giving the reports about the sheep, a third one also came. He had to wait because the second one was still giving his report. And when the second one finished, the third one also said what he had come to give. Verse 17, he says, Whilst he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, and took them away. Yes, and they killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped. Come and tell you. Mm. <laughs> so the third one's report, first one's report, is donkeys, 500 donkeys, 500 cows, gone. Stolen by the Sabians. And the Sabians knew that they couldn't just take those 500 cows and donkeys without uh, killing the servants. So they killed them so that they could take them away. Then fire came and destroyed, killed all the sheep. Then the Chaldeans also came and also attacked the camels and took away the camels, killing all the servants in the process. Hallelujah. So now all the possessions are gone. All the servants taking care of all these possessions that made Job a wealthy man is gone. Verse 18, it says, whilst that third one was still speaking, a fourth one came and said, your sons and your daughters, he has seven sons, three daughters, seven sons, three daughters, seven sons, three daughters, whilst they were eating and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, that means the oldest son, suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they are all dead. So the servants that were taking care of the young, uh, the, 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 the children, the older brother's house, he was throwing a party so all the servants who were cooking and cleaning and, and serving and all those things, they, the house broke on all of them. <laughs> dead. I alone have survived to come and tell you. So now Job has his wife and the servants that are with him and these four servants that came. Everything else is gone. Everything else written is gone. Hallelujah. Everything else is gone. Well, so that was one day then another day came. So it, the Bible says, through it all, Job did not say anything. He did not sin or not charge God. That's verse 22. He said in verse 20, he tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell on the ground and he worshiped and he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with a wrong. One day, 
trouble came to visit Job. And everything he had was gone. That didn't end there. When, when the devil realized that Job, see, this was the work of the, the devil. He came to Jesus, God, and said, Oh, the reason Job worships you is because you are giving him everything. Some of us too, that's how our service to God is. When God gives us everything, then yes, God is good. God is love. God is kind. God is, oh my goodness, whatever we want, we got. So God is good. The moment trouble comes to visit, all of a sudden, we are ready to give up. We are ready to be frustrated. We are ready to be angry with God. We are ready. Notes. That the things that Job lost, the donkeys and the camel, were stolen by the Sabians. The, um, the, the, the camels were stolen by the Chaldeans. But the sheep, they said a fire came from heaven to destroy all of them. The children, they said the wind came from all corners and broke down the house and it fell on the children. So, if it was you, and it was I, when we see the fire coming from heaven, we say, hey, God has destroyed my sheep. God, see, God, I've been worshiping you. God, I've been doing all these things for you. God, I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I go to church. I pray. I fast. I do all these things. And you have, you have burnt all my sheep. God, you, you. This one we won't blame the devil because he came from heaven, right? So it is the it, it's it's the devil's it's God it's God's fault. Oh, the winds and oh, it's all the handiwork of God. God destroyed my house where the children are and killed all of them. Eesh. If it was you and I, you, we, and God, we will have a fight. We'll have an argument. We'll have a misunderstanding. We'll have a crisis. But it may be right now as you are going through your trouble. As you are going through the things that are going on in your life. You are ready or you are already arguing with God. You are already stressed out with God. You are already frustrated with God. Because why did he allow that to happen in your life? Why did he cause things to happen the way they did? Why did he cause you to have that man that is beating you? Why did he cause you to lose that job that was paying you so well? Why did he allow you to have that accident that destroyed your car or the things that you are going through? Why, God? Why, 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 why? Many of us are having this argument with God even right now. And maybe it might be tomorrow and you will have that argument because everything that you have is gone. But if you listen to what Job said, Job said, God giveth and God taketh. God gave him everything he had. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. That means I came to this world without anything and I'm going to leave without anything. Hallelujah. He said, the Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Brethren, whatever is happening in your life, God gave it to you. And if God has taken it away, then he knows why he has taken it away. If he knows why he has taken it away, then you have no reason to be arguing with somebody who gave you something and has taken it away. And if he gave it to you and he has taken it away from you, then he knows why. He knows why. Hallelujah. But that wasn't the end of Job's problem. So Job thinks everything is okay now. Now I have to just deal with the loss of my property and my children. But then the Bible says that Job was there and trouble came visiting again. Chapter 2 and verse 7 of the book of Job. It says, so Job went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the soles of his feet to the crowns of his head. Boil. In my language, we call it pompo. Pompo covered him from the head to the soles of his feet. Was covered in painful boils. 
and he took it for himself, a pot shed, of which he scraped himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Because the boy was painful, so he had to scrape it. He had to scratch it. Oh, every pain, everywhere where he had an itch or a pain, he scratched it with a pot, a, a, a broken pot. And it caused bruises on his body. Hallelujah. So whilst he was going through that, verse 9 of chapter 2, then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Do you still hold fast to your worship of God? God is doing this or God is allowing this to happen in your life. And you still say you are a Christian. Oh, God is allowing you to lose that job. You are jobless. You are homeless. You are going through a crisis. There are things going wrong in your life. And you are still holding on to it. God allowed these things to happen. And you are still holding on to it. Hallelujah. So his, his wife is advising him. Curse God. And even if God kills you, at least this suffering will end. That's why some people commit suicide. They want it to end by force. Whether, whether they, they're ready or not, they, now they can't take it anymore. I have 7,000 sheep. Gone. 3,000 camels. Gone. 500 cows. Gone. 500 donkeys. Gone. 10 children. Gone. Now boil from head to toe. All suffering. And you want me to continue to live. I can't live like this no more. I give up. And so some of us, some people give up. And they commit suicide. They kill themselves. They shoot themselves. They hang themselves. And then life is over. They think that by doing that, it's over. Now, uh, uh, yes. Now I won't have to experience this pain no more. That's their solution. But right in this afternoon, and as you hear this message, if you are contemplating suicide, do not. Job did not contemplate suicide. Job did not question God. Job did not. After going through all this, I don't know what you are going through, but I bet you it is nothing compared to this. Look, I have only three children. If one of them dies right now through any of these circumstances, it won't be funny. It won't be funny. Maybe you have lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost a husband. Maybe you've lost a child. It is not funny at all. Maybe you've lost a job. It is not funny to have a family and you've lost a job and you have no way to take care of them. It is not funny at all. And I'm not here to say it is. I'm just saying that do not contemplate something terrible to do something that you shouldn't do. Job did not contemplate. He didn't question God. He didn't contemplate suicide. He didn't contemplate doing something wicked or mean. The Bible says that Job said, verse um, 10, it says, So he said to his wife, You speak as someone who is foolish. Shall we indeed accept the good things from God and not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Hallelujah. In all this, he didn't sin. So whatever you are going through, whatever you went through, whatever is even yet to come that you will go through, do not contemplate sinning. Do not contemplate evil. Do not contemplate on doing what you shouldn't do. So trouble paid a visit. And it's not only Job. Moses' mother was pregnant. And while she was, she was pregnant, trouble came visiting. They passed a law that said that anybody who gives birth, that child must die. That newborn must die. Whether you like it or not. When that newborn is born, the moment he is born, that newborn must die. Moses' mother is pregnant. She gives birth to a son. Now the son must die. Trouble has come to visit. Trouble has come to visit Moses' mother. What do I do? I have a son, and that son won't keep quiet. Nye, 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 all over the place. I can't even hide the kid no more. So Moses' mother decided that, okay, instead of killing the baby myself, 
or sending it over to be killed. I'm just leaving it in the water and I'm leaving it in God's hands. So my mother put it in a basket, put Moses in a basket and set the basket free. Wherever God would take it, that's fine with him. That's fine with her. That's fine with Moses. Whatever God decides to do. So whatever God is doing, preparing to do in your life, in the middle of your crisis, in the middle of your problem, whatever the trouble is, don't worry. God is with you. God will take care of it. Hallelujah. God will take care of your situation. Joseph was there and he was living in his father's house. Everything was good. He was his father's favorite. Life was good. His father bought him a coat of many colors. He was one of the best children of his father and his mother. The eye of the apple of the mother's eye, the apple of the father's eye. His brothers are taking care of the sheep. He's home. He's enjoying. Then father sends him, take some food to your brothers. So, so Joseph sets off. And he grabs the food and he's going to his brothers. And they see him coming. And they, they plan trouble for him. The moment he gets there, they catch him, they take off his clothes and they throw him in a well. Trouble has come to visit Joseph. Now he's in the middle, of, he's down in a well. From a good life to in a well without clothes. Then, whilst he's there, He's ho he thinks life is going to get better. Hoping, hoping, hoping. Okay, they, he, they start pulling him out. He thinks, that, okay, now they've, they've decided to punish me enough. They're letting me go. Oh, he, he comes out. Next thing he knows, he's been sold. And he's going on the back of a camel into slavery. He gets there. They sell him to Potiphar's house. All right, this is my new situation. See, maybe some of us, our trouble comes and comes and comes and goes and goes and goes and comes and goes and goes and comes and goes. Taking us always to something else. So Joseph is now in Potiphar's house. Life is beginning to get good. He begins to excel in the house. Things are getting better. Now Potiphar has decided, okay, Joseph, you're the best. I am leaving everything in your hands. So life is good for Joseph. Then all of a sudden trouble comes again comes to pay a visit again. And this time it is through Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife is tempting him, trying to get him to, uh, trying to seduce him. Joseph says, I'm not doing it. Oh, next thing he knows, the wife causes Joseph to be thrown in prison because he tells a lie on Joseph. Joseph now is back in prison. He's not back, but in prison. From a good life in Potiphar's house, now he's in prison. Well, whilst he's in prison, life is beginning to get a little better. But then, God was not done with him yet. But then God is not done with you yet. God is doing something good in your life. He's about to do something wonderful in your life. He's about to take you to a new place. See, he took Joseph from his father's house, to, from the well, to slavery, to Potiphar's house, from Potiphar's house to prison. And from prison, Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt. God is not done with you yet. God is not done with you yet. The trouble, ask for the trouble that will come. Mordecai is another example. Of he was there, just, hey, his, his niece is now the queen. He hangs around the palace. He just minding his own business. Then all of a sudden, because he wouldn't bow down to uh, Haman, Haman gets upset. And Haman says that, okay, goes to king and gets permission from king. We are going to kill every Jew in our land. Give me permission, let's do that, because they don't want to obey our laws and laws. And that's what Haman plots against Mordecai. But you see, in the middle of his plot, one day he went, he was passing by, and Mordecai wouldn't, despite the law being passed, that says on a particular day, two months ahead, or three months ahead, they were going to kill all the Jews, he's still passing by, and Mordecai won't Bow, bow down. That even angered Haman the more. So as soon as Haman got home, he, he decided, as for this man, I got to, I got to kill him. This time I won't even wait. So he made them build a gallow in ha in his house so that he can hang Mordecai on it. He's going to see the king, and when he gets there, 
the king says, ah, there is somebody who has done something great for me and I want to honor him. What do I do? Hey man thinking it was he himself says, oh, take, take your, your robe and put it on that man. Give him your signet ring, a sign of your authority. Put him on your horse and have one of his loyal, uh, assist your loyal leaders walk in front of him and say, this is who the Lord has pleasure in. And the king says to Haman, Haman, who had come to see the king for permission to go and kill Mordecai, God says, <laughs> the king says to Haman, go and do what you just said. That robe, that ring, that horse, with one of the royal people walking in front of him, you be that royal person. Go and do it for Mordecai. Put Mordecai on my horse. Put my robe on him. Put my ring on him. You, Haman. Who wants, who was plotting to kill Mordecai? You walk in front of him. But then you think your problem is, is, is too big. But you, last week we learned that we serve a big God. That big God is with you in that time of trouble. Bible says, call on me in your time of trouble and I will give you rest. God is speaking to you. He says, call on me in the time of your trouble and I will give you rest. If God can bring Mordecai out of that situation to a new place of heights, hallelujah, then we know that God is good. Our sister Nana sang a song, and I'm going to ask sister Nana to sing the song one more time. God of the mountain. Sister Nana, if you can, sing my song for me. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When you are upon the mountain mm -hmm. and you've got peace of mind. Oh, when life is not easy you and you are on the mountain. Know. And you think you've got peace of mind. Like you've never known. But things change. But when you are down in the valley. Oh, don't lose faith. For you are not alone. You are not alone, my brother. You are not alone, my sister. Don't lose faith. Because one day. Oh, the God of the mountain. That God of the mountain. It's still the God in the valley. Brethren, that God of the mountain is still God in the valley. Hallelujah. He will make things right. Oh, the God of the good times is the same God when times are bad. The God of the day is the same God at night. Oh, brethren, that God that was with you when you were up in the mountain. That God when was with you when you were down in the valley. You know, you should understand that that God is still with you. God is not done with you yet. But talk is so easy. We can say things that we are upset about. Life is not best sometimes. Oh, when times are in the valley, when we are faced with trials and tribulations and temptations. But where is your faith? Where is your faith, brethren? Oh, where is your faith? The trouble when it comes to visit is just testing you. It's just testing you, brethren. When test comes, for the God of the mountain is the same God in the valley. When things go wrong, brethren, he will, God will make them right. And that God of the good times is the same God in the bad times. Brethren, I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what you're going through as you hear this message. But I want you to know that, that God that was with you when times were good is the same God that is with you. When times are bad, he doesn't give up on you. He's going to hold you. He's going to see you through. He's going to see you through as you go through this bad time. It is not over. 
till God says it is over. It is not over till God says it is over. Don't give up. Trouble will come. I tell you, I know it will come. Maybe you're going through it right now. And as you listen to this message, I want you to know that God is not done with you yet. It's not over. It's not over. It's just a visit from trouble. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. God of times, God of the good times, God of the mountain, is still God when times are bad. God of that mountain, that time when times were good, when times everything was fine. And you thought that all oh, this is good. Trouble will come visiting. And when it comes to visit, don't lose hope. Because in Job, in chapter 42, see, the book of Job has 42 chapters. The first chapter, right in chapter 1, is when trouble visited. And he went through all this. And when we get to chapter 42, it says that Job, life became good for Job again. His 7,000 sheep he lost. His 3,000 camels he lost. His 500 donkeys he lost. And the 500 cows he lost. When God came through for him, when times became good again, his 7,000, he got 14,000 sheep. He got 6,000 cows. He got 1,000 cows. And he got 1,000 donkeys. He got seven sons back. He got three more children, uh, three more daughters. He had seven sons and three daughters again. And he needed, this time he didn't need servants enough to take care of 7,000 sheep. He needed servants to take care of 14,000 sheep. He didn't need servants to, to, to take care of 3,000 camels. He now needs servants to take care of 6,000 camels. Brethren, what are you talking about? I'm saying to you that if God can do this for you, then he can do it for you too. So whatever the trouble you're going through, whatever crisis you are in, when after trouble comes to visit, God who is with you during that time will bring you out to a new place, to a new place, to a new place. So I'll bring it to a close and I say this, that no one is immune from trouble. No matter who you are, trouble will come and visit you someday. If he hasn't already visited, it will come. It's definite. It will surely come. So what you need to do is to seek the face in your time of trouble. Bible says, call on me. Ask, seek, knock. That's what God is asking you to do. That's what God is asking you to do. So if you're going through any trouble today, ask, seek, knock, call, cry unto the Lord. Tell him what you're going through. And God will see you through it. Victory is on the way. Victory will come. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will open the doors and pour out victory onto you. It is coming. So, brethren, trouble will come. But it is not supposed to make us bitter, but rather to make us better, to change situations. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, which do you want? None of us really wants the trouble. But the things that God takes us through and how he makes us at the end of the trouble is almost always better than the time before the trouble. So Job had three, six thousand, uh, seven thousand 7,000 sheep. He got 14,000. He had 3,000 camel. He had 6,000. See, life became better after the trouble came. Joseph was in his father's house. He was just a little boy. But when he went through the trouble, after trouble's visit, in the end, he became the prime minister. And he was actually the one who saved his entire family when the family famine came. Which do you want? To be in your father's house like Joseph and be there and then the famine hits. And now you are with your brothers going to some other land to go and beg for food. And going to beg from someone 
who you don't even know or care about you. Is that what you want? So you see, when trouble comes, it's not always where the trouble is supposed to make us bad. So the message today is, trouble will come, but when it comes, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Trust God. Amen. Let's pray. Father Lord, we come to you and we pray that Lord my God, those of us who are in trouble, see us through it. Those when trouble comes, give us the confidence so that we don't lose hope and we don't lose trust in you, but keep our faith alive. And so when we are up in the mountain or whether we are down in the valley, let us know that you are with us and be our God and see us through in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.